Hi y'all! So today I'm going to be doing the hijacked book tag. So my friend T Mox Soul and I both decided to do our very first booktube tag as a collaboration. So I came up with five questions, he came up with five questions, and here we go. I've got a link to his tag, it came out two days ago in the description below, check that out. And if any of my viewers out there are interested in getting a free signed copy of my book, The Last Dragon Princess, then T-Mock is being kind enough to do a giveaway of my book at the end of his video, so definitely check that out. Okay, so 10 questions. The first five are mine, the last five are T-Mock's. A book that changed your mind about something. For this one, I am picking Alex and Me by Irene Pepperberg. Alex was a scientific experiment. He was an African gray parrot and his name is avian language experiment. And he was Irene Pepperberg's sort of grand thesis of trying to figure out how intelligent exactly these animals are. And what she discovered through her many years of um, experimenting with Alex and trying to teach him as much language, as many concepts as he could in a very intense laboratory setting uh, was that these birds are capable of a lot more than we ever expected. In high school and college I did a lot of rescue work for large parrots and uh, I'm not really set up for it now. I got out of it but the more I came to learn about these animals and the more I came to understand of their immense intelligent and emotional capacity and how much they need and how much they've evolved to interact with so many others of their species and to have all of these relationships and all of this problem solving they do. It, uh, it convinced me that these animals really shouldn't be part of the day-to-day -day pet trade. Now certainly there are individuals out there who can give wonderful homes to these birds, but my opinion has definitely moved towards the idea of their primary place should be in the wild where nature put them and where they can get these needs met much more effectively than they can in a typical household where people are busy and can't give them the 24 hour interactions that they, they really need. A lot of times this ends up putting essentially the an animal with the intellectual and mental and emotional needs of a four-year-old put in a cage all day. Excellent book. Um, unfortunately, Alex passed away many years ago. Uh, I think I was in college at the time, but he really taught us a lot about just how amazing these critters are. Number two, a book that showed you a world you didn't know existed. And for this, I am choosing the Humanure Handbook by Joseph Jenkins. I think I got this as a gag gift one Christmas. The main thesis of this book is, okay, look, we've got two valuable things. We've got clean water and we've got nutrient rich waste. And our modern Western way of dealing with this is to put these two valuable things together in order to make a problem, which is sewage. And <laughs> So this breaks things down, this breaks down the science of composting and the do's and don'ts of composting and the ruthlessly pragmatic approach <laughs> that this book has along with all of the humor it puts into the situation is lovely. <laughs> and this was the best gag gift I ever got. And I, I, I know so much more about composting and um, sustainable composting and sustainable sewage treatment. And it had never occurred to me before. Question number three, a plot twist you did not see coming. And for this one, I chose Orson Scott Card's uh, Ender's Shadow. This is a spin-off to Ender's Game. Now I know this author has had a lot of controversy, but I love his work. I love his stories. And this book, Ender's Game, I loved, but this is my favorite of Scott Card's. The background story of Bean, the main character in this book, 
I didn't see that coming. All through Ender's Game, he's just sort of the smart kid, this little, you know, peewee of a smart kid. And, but I wasn't seeing the backstory and I didn't see that coming. I don't know if it was anything in particular in the plot here, a plot twist that I didn't see coming, but I didn't see this character coming in nearly the way that he was developed in this book. And that was a lovely surprise. I enjoyed every second of this book. Number four, a book you wouldn't have read but got hijacked into reading by a friend. And for this one, I am going to and for this one, I am going to go with A Princess of Wands by John Ringo. Uh, this is one my husband and I decided to swap books one day, books we thought the other might enjoy. And um, so I gave him one book and he gave me this book. This was different, definitely. And it, so it has a similar world building setup to the Iron Druid Chronicles, which I'm a big fan of, which is essentially that this is a fantasy world and all religions exist, all demons exist, everything you've ever heard of, all the gods, they all exist. And their power comes from faith. So the more people that believe in them, um, the more kind of power they have and the more real they are. And so this individual, she is a suburban mom. She's a devout Christian. And she becomes like this super warrior of God um, in this whole demon battle fighting thing. And the book, it's really a collection of novellas, three novellas. And in one of the novellas, it's more like a fan fiction of the world. And the author has a little self insert role at like a comic-con convention thing this is probably the only book i've ever read where months it's been almost a year since i've read this i still don't know how i feel about this book number five how you hijack yourself into reading outside of your comfort zone for me this is more about boredom i'm an extreme uh, mood reader so i'm happy to drop one book and pick up another, even if I was enjoying the first book, just because I'm in the mood for a different sort of book. This often leads to burnout if you're an extreme mood reader. So one thing I've learned about myself is if I find myself getting into a reading slump, I just pick up something completely off the wall, completely different than anything else I've read. Uh, and that almost always does the trick. Um, something new, something different. It's a good trick uh, to Hijack my brain there. So right, now we got some Atimox questions. Number six, a fictional book you wished was nonfiction. Uh, that one, I'm going to go with Robert, Robert Highland's The Moon is a Harsh, Harsh Mistress. It's been years since I read this, but this, what I remember of it, I want to reread it. This was fascinating. So basically the idea is the moon is colonized, but it's kind of like, Earth's Australia, which is in that we sent all of our um, fugitives, not our fugitives, we sent all of our criminals there. So, but now time has passed and they've got their own thing going. We don't just, maybe we do, I don't know. It's been a while, but there's an extreme disproportion of genders there. There's like 15 men for every woman or something like that. And this in addition to being an extremely harsh environment, has led to a completely different reinterpretation of human relationships, of what marriage is, of what family dynamics are. The entire economics of human culture has been reimagined. And it was a fascinating read. They had an entirely different interpretation of a lot of the elements of feminism, and it was a really fascinating read and ah, it would be so cool to go and visit this completely alien uh, human civilization because it, it is it's on another planet it evolved on another planet and and imagine what we could learn from each other if uh, if we had this and that would be very cool 
Number seven, a non-fictional book that you wished was fiction. So this one, I'm going with War Against the Weak by Edwin Black. This is basically a hundred year snapshot from when the modern concept of genetics was first discovered by a German monk and how an arrogant interpretation of that by the majority of sort of the Western world led to the Holocaust, led to the 1970s attempted genocide on the Native American population here in America, and led to a great deal of human suffering on a wide scale, uh, both in this country and abroad. And it's a fascinating read. It's an unfortunate read. But yeah, that would have, it would have made a fascinating fiction. It really would have. Um, it made a sadder reality. Number eight, a book you owned that was hijacked from someone or a book you hijacked from someone else. The only one I could think of here was The Backyard Homesteader by David Tote, Toit, Tot, him. And this was, I loaned this book to a neighbor. Um, this was one of my favorite backyard gardening books. It talks a lot, it's, it's basically how to get the most out of a small amount of property. And it talked a lot about companion planting. And this was a book I referenced every year when I was planning out my garden and planning out the companion planting. What plants to plant with others to give maximum benefit, that sort of thing. And uh, the neighbor asked to borrow it because she wanted to plan out her garden and then she like moved twice and I, I don't think my book is there anymore yeah I really should just buy another copy number nine a book that was hijacked in the middle of you reading it this was the hardest question for me to try to think of and in reality no one's ever been stupid enough to try to take a book I was in the middle of reading um oddly enough that has never happened Can't imagine why. And the 10th question is actually 9B, did you ever get it back to finish it? So, um, so th that's uh, irrelevant. And number 10, let's hijack some fellow booktubers and author tubers. So for this, I'm going to tag Clay from Clay the Author. Clay's been a little hit and miss with video posting and it seems like the only way to get him back is to tag him. So Clay, you are tagged. Beth from Beautifully Bookish Bethany. I would love to hear some of her answers to this. She is adorable. The One Take Wonder known as Rob from Robison Castello. I'm also going to tag Fatuma from Fatuma Books. She's been absent as well. I'd love to get her back on booktube. So Fatuma, please do this tag. And last but not least, Adrian from Strip Cover Lit. His channel does a lot more literary stuff. Um, all these links in the description below, check them out. And if you want to do this tag, absolutely tag me and tag TMOC in it. And we would love to hear what any of y'all come up with. That's all for me today. Talk to me in the comments. Would love to hear from you. Until then, bye-bye. Okay. Okay. And that, that's it. That's, that, that's it.